Welcome to our broadcast. Hi, I'm Samantha Halverson. I'm Janet Rochelle, and we are broadcast media students at Huntington University, Arizona. Now in our third year of operation, Huntington has grown from 18 to 150 students and offers film, broadcast, graphic design, and animation degrees. In today's show, we will be speaking with some of our talented Huntington film students. We will also hear from Guy Erickson with the Peoria Chamber of Commerce, who will be highlighting local members of our community. We hope you enjoy these stories featuring our students and members of the P83 community. Hello everyone, my name is Madeline Benavidez. Today we have a special guest joining us, 2019 BEA Award winner, writer, and director, Huntington's very own Stephen Davis. Take a look at this preview of his award-winning short film, Motion. There is just so much more to it all. Sometimes in life, we meet people that simply take us by surprise. They come out of nowhere and they are just everything you've ever wanted. It's both exciting and terrifying. I think part of the reason why it's so terrifying is because you know how vulnerable you're about to make yourself. You are about to give your heart to a complete stranger in the hopes that it may become something more. Here with me now is Stephen Davis. How are you, Stephen? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really good. So you just got back from Vegas, correct? <sighs> yes. So yes, how I is did. Vegas? If anyone doesn't know, Stephen actually just won his first 2019 BEA award for his short film, Motions. So can you talk a little bit about Motions and where your inspiration came from Motions? Well, it's, it's actually quite a lot, but um, to distill it down, I myself kind of had uh, a lot of relationships throughout my life where it kind of crumbled and my heart was broken. Like, you know, I've had people say they want to marry me and then change their minds. So I, I, I always was kind of like distressed emotionally as a kid and didn't really know um, what a healthy relationship was. Um, and on top of that, I've had people like really close to me, um, unfortunately, do some rather, you know, sad and depressing things because of heartbreak and and things that I wish, you know, I could go back and change. Right. So part of me thinks that by making a film like this, that um, if certain people would have seen it, maybe they would have done something differently. Or maybe if a past version of myself saw it, maybe I would have done something differently. And think that um, sometimes in life we have things that we think are like all we ever wanted and all we need. Um, and that it gets taken from us, but the hope is that we can realize that it's going to be okay. Like, it's okay to be sad about that, but at the end of the day, if you have some faith, everything happens for a reason, and, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel to be cheesy. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you got so deep so quick there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I could go more. No, that's awesome. It seems like film's, like, really therapeutic for you, though. Absolutely. Yeah, growing up all throughout my life, um, I mean, it's why I'm a filmmaker, why I want to do film. Um, I, like, uh, even awards aside, like, the whole reason I do film is because I want to inspire. That's what film did for me as a kid, watching, like, Spielberg and just all these classics. I mean, I, I talk about Spielberg a lot just because he's, like, was my favorite director as a kid. Um, and as a family, my mom, my brother, we would, our thing was we'd always watch movies together That's and awesome. go to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. So, like, the movie theater became, like, this therapeutic thing for me and so yeah. I, I I hope to one day be able to do that same thing for someone else. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. So coming off of this win that you just had, what is it like now to say that you've won a <laughs> national award? That's insane. A 2019 it's, BEA. Yeah, it's really, it's really weird. It's really weird because I'm very much like, it, it's good to be confident at all times in my opinion, but mm -hmm. it's still kind of a strange thing to think that this little film could garner that kind of attention and um, have people tell me like they watched it and it made them tear up or they appreciated it or I've had people at film festivals say like oh man I've had such a similar situation to this and like so it was really nice seeing this 
Um, and yeah, it's just crazy. And, and nothing, I'm nothing but humbled and you know, grateful to get that kind of recognition. Like, and for me too, it's not just my success, like film and film, it's a crew. Like mm -hmm. there's multiple people. So like when I take the award, one of the first things I said on stage was, um, you know, this isn't just for me. Like this is for us, like mm -hmm. everyone who was on the crew. So right. um, I wanna share that. That's amazing, that's yeah. awesome. So since you have, you've now won a 2019 BEA, and of course, you don't, you're not gonna stop there, right? I'm, no. I'm hoping, okay, good. Absolutely so not. So what's going up next for you? What's in the near future? What yeah. What do you look forward to? Yeah, so near future. Um, I mean, we're currently in post-production for uh, another short film I was working on called Be There, yes. which if you thought Motions was dramatic, this is 10 times more dramatic. Oh, you're really laying dramatic. it on, now you're Yeah, <laughs> um, I took it as a challenge as a director and writer to, like I've done a little, like Motions, I, I kind of dipped my foot into drama and then I was like, I'm just gonna go for it full force and see what I can do with drama and something that's super intense. Um, but yeah, Be There is my next movie that's gonna be coming out. And it's about a man who's grieving because his fiance passes away mm -hmm. and he blames himself for it. Um, so his half brother, who he hasn't seen in three years, tries to um, see him and reconnect with him because they don't have a good relationship. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's very deep. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cynical of me to say, but I hope people get sad by it. <laughs> but at the end, it, it, you know, it's, you'll see. Right. But, yeah. No, it's not that you hope people get sad. You just want to communicate <laughs> I hope that people, emotion. Yeah. I hope people feel something. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's what film's all about. Film is all about, I mean, just like most art forms, it's about watching it, experiencing it, and feeling something and being moved by it. And, right. and just like, so Motions was kind of about love and acceptance. Um, be There is about grief and regret. Wow. Yeah. Wow, really diving in. Yes. I'm so excited for you, Stephen. I cannot <laughs> wait you. to see where you're going to go. Thank you. And seriously, thank you so much for coming on set today. Oh, absolutely. We're so lucky to have you here. I will come Kingston. anytime. Seriously, it's amazing. So I just want to say thank you all for tuning in today, and thank you all for listening to Stephen talk about his 2019 BEA Award and his upcoming film, Be There. Um, it's going to be amazing. I already know. So, um, <laughs> Can't wait to see you all and uh, tune in for next week's episode. Hi everyone, it's Guy Erickson. I'm the President and CEO of the Peoria Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here today with the amazing students and staff at Huntington University for Digital Arts. We're putting together these videos of our members and today's guest is Michael... Ryman. Ryman from <laughs> AZ Barbecue Catering. Michael is one of the largest barbecue caterers here in the state, and I know you work all over the state. Tell me a little bit about the business. We do. We actually started out in 1987 as an ASU tailgate crew and uh, kind of blew up from there. And then we became, uh, we morphed into the barbecue club here in Arizona. So we're actually also the barbecue club, AZ Barbecue is the barbecue club here in Arizona. And we put on a lot of those big barbecue cook-offs like you see on TV. So we've been doing that since uh, probably, I don't know, 1996 or so. Wow. Yeah, so we put on some really, really big barbecue comps and uh, we have a, a lot of members, over, over 3,500 members on our website. And, then it kind of turned into AZ Barbecue Catering. We had so many people asking us about, hey, uh, you know, we want some of your food. Your food tastes great. You know, let's uh, let's do that. So in 2006, we took the took the business official, and uh, we've been we've been going ever since. So. Sounds good. So yeah. does your AZ Barbecue have a specialty of what they barbecue? What you barbecue? So we're we're most known for uh, for our pulled pork and our uh, our fresh sliced tri tip, but uh, all of our food is fantastic. We uh, we've developed all of our sides and all of our recipes ourselves through. Uh, trial and error, a lot of them through the tailgates over at ASU and the Cardinals that we did over the years. But uh, yeah, everything's, uh, everything's our, our own and uh, our own recipes and we're, we're good to go. Fantastic. So how'd you ever get into this? As a hobby and yeah, it was or? yeah, it was a hobby. You know, uh, when when we uh, started going to ASU, my buddies and I wanted to be the uh, Mac Daddies out at the tailgates. And okay. We always wanted those big trailer smokers, and so we uh, we looked around for about six months, found one that we liked, went and bought it, and uh, then we had to create a website to to you know put out all of our conquests and everything else, and. We did that first month. We had 834 hits on the site, and wow. it took off from there. Yeah, at the, at the heyday, we were averaging over three million hits a month on our site. Wow. Yeah. So now with social media and uh, you know everybody want instantaneous answers to barbecue questions, you know it's taken a taken a little bit of a hit, but we're still averaging between uh, 500,000 and 800,000 hits a month on the site. So yeah. it's pretty. Everybody pretty certainly pretty knows good. about you then. Yeah, and so. So do you still do the tailgating thing? We haven't done tailgating in a few years, uh, you know, knock on wood, you know, we've gotten so busy now on the weekends, you know, we're, we're doing, you know, eight, 10 events uh, a, a weekend. So that's, wow. uh, that's a good problem to have. 
you know, we do a lot of weddings, a lot of corporate events, uh, you know, a lot of rehearsal dinners. Uh, tonight we're doing a, a, a Liberty High School a catering over there. So we do a lot of the high school sports teams banquets. So uh, it's pretty neat. So, and then when you do that, do you cater it inside or you bring out the big trailer? Or, yeah, or we bring out, it... well, it depends on what they want. You know, some of them want to do it inside a, a cafeteria or a room. So we'll come set up inside and just do the serve. Uh, some of them want the whole show where we'll bring the smokers out and, you know, they want to hear the sizzle, see the smoke, you know, smell, smell everything. And uh, that's our favorite part of it because that's really what we thrive in. So, you know, we have a, we have a great setup. You know, we've uh, had years of putting it all together and, uh, you know, we got a great staff, so we know what we're doing. Fantastic. So is there any particular part of the, of the, the whole process that you enjoy the most? I definitely enjoy the uh, the public interaction the most. You know, I, I consider myself a front man. Years ago, we had a uh, food trailer, and we actually saw our business take a dive with the food trailer because I was inside doing all the cooking. You know, people couldn't hear the sizzle, see the smoke, and I wasn't out there talking to people. So we sold the food trailer and went back to doing our, uh, you know, we do our big tents and our, our smoker set up outside, and we set up a carving table, you know, so people can come right up and talk with us. You know, it's one of the few places people will run to a guy with a big knife. You know, most places they run from them. <laughs> there so. you go. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Well, I know you have helped us tremendously with our upcoming Peoria Hometown Heroes event. Um, yeah, we're excited about it. Working to uh, recognize and, and thank the students going right into the military. Yep. Uh, do you, are you active in other things? What do you do for fun besides make barbecue? <laughs> we are active in a lot of things. We actually do a lot of charities around town. We do the Phoenix Police Tip a Cop every year. We do the Glendale Firefighters Fill a Boot Charity every year. Um, we do the uh, Glendale PD Battle of the uh, uh, Police Department's Rib Battle that's coming up here on uh, on May 4th. So we do a lot with the municipalities and, uh, you know, things like that. But uh, for fun, you know, we, uh, we like to RV and travel and, uh, you know, we, we I would imagine do your, cruises. all of your weekends are pretty full though. They are, but we're running the barbecue club in the state. So uh, every other year we take a cruise with the barbecue club. And then every other year we take an RV trip with the barbecue club. So it's kind of cool. So we, we've had those going on now for about uh, six, eight years. So that's kind of neat. That's fantastic. Yeah. It sounds like a fun thing to do. I yeah. love to barbecue myself. I'll have to become a, a member of the club. Yeah, and get free on the to website. join. Yeah, it's free to join. So. One of the few few clubs that are free to join. Where else can you go with that? There, that's the truth. Yeah. And, and learn all kinds about barbecuing too. Absolutely. You have a particular meat that you like the most? You know, I was always a chicken guy. I always loved cooking the chicken, uh, you know, the backyard style chicken. You know, nowadays people are, you know, so they're into the, the dunking the chicken and the sauce. Uh, we cook Memphis style, so uh, that's more or less the, the dry rubs. We have great sauces that go along with it, but uh, yeah, we like to we like to do it traditional. You know, we do the dry rubs and get the grill marks on there. And uh, and you guys don't do chicken though, right? We do. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. we do several I different kinds of chicken. Because I know for the event we talked about, I'm trying to locate pork and ribs yeah. and tri-tip and brisket. And yeah, ch chicken's one of those things that uh, people get a little weird on, you know, especially when you smoke it because it's still pink inside because of the smoke. People sure. think it's not done. Right. So when you do an event like uh, like the one we're doing at Peoria Hometown Heroes, the, the learning curve's a little bit too much for the public that's not really used to that. So rather than trying to explain out, out there where we're trying to help you know yep. raise as much money, we, yep. we did the traditionals. You know, we're doing the ribs and the pork and the uh, tri-tip and the brisket. So sounds good. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough. Thanks, guys. Thank you for jumping in here Absolutely. for me and helping us out it. today. Definitely. Thanks, everybody. Meet Michael. Come see his barbecue. Join his website. Thank you. It's hard to put into words what we actually do here. It's almost like when you walk in these doors, it's a whole different atmosphere. I toured the school like, oh my gosh, I like fell in love with it. It's very comforting to find like people that have like the same interests. It's just really neat to see kind of the melting pot of all the different talents that come together. Huntington has created an environment for us to pursue excellence. Let's grow and be the best that we can be, to not get static. There definitely is a push to get better and better. I went from not even knowing the different camera names to working on a short film. I'd never like worked with the camera before. And it's the first film set I've ever been on. It was both exciting and challenging. I was thrown into it first semester, but each semester we've grown. It was kind of accelerated, but it also kind of helped me learn as I went through. Our professors will work one-on-one -on -one with us. The professors were downright sitting next to you at the computer showing you different design work. Here it actually feels like, okay, um, because of the faith-based, the teachers actually care. The faith aspect has been very well integrated. The feeling of community that you have here, the, the Christian encouragement, is definitely very, very inviting. When I found out that it was a Christian school, I was a little intimidated because I was not raised as a Christian. What I thought would happen is kind of the opposite. Everyone's been so much nicer than any school I've ever been to. I actually enjoy coming to school now. It's very different from any other school that I've visited. This is so much different. Here it's kind of different. It's different and it's, it stands out from the rest. If 
you are interested in actually doing what you're being taught, then you should come here. It's been one of the best experiences I've ever had. This is the place to tell your story. This is the place. Honey, I'm home. How was your day? It was fine, like usual. What is that? Honestly, Evan, it's like you've never seen a puppy before. Well, Cosette, you can't just go out and get a puppy without my consent. I already did. His name is Hamilton. And you already named him? Cosette, we don't, we don't, we don't know anything about being parents. Why are you being like this? It's been a lot lately. Well, I think that you'd do great. Family history doesn't say so. You're nothing like your father. You're better than that. And I love you. Love you too. Maybe we can make this work, huh? I sure hope so. Because you really don't have a choice. And why is that? I'm pregnant. Here with me now is Chloe Evans. How are you, Chloe? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, I just want to ask you, like, what drew you specifically into filmmaking? Um, what drew me into filmmaking is actually my father. Um, he owns a production company, and so ever since I was young, he would make these little movies with me. And so whenever we would make these movies, I just felt really drawn to the whole filmmaking process. Not on camera so much, but behind the camera. I remember the first time he let me, like, actually use the camera and I just had this huge smile on my face the whole entire time and since that I've just been making movies and just growing as a filmmaker. That's so nice. Um, so what made you decide Huntington would be the right school for you? Um, it's, I actually found it through my dad again. Um, he was putting on a film festival and uh, he wanted Huntington to sponsor it. So um, Huntington came and they said I should take some classes. So I was like, do you have a screenwriting class? And like, yeah. And so screenwriting was one of the first classes I took. And after that, I just fell in love with the school. So I love that. So with your years of experience in filmmaking, um, how has being a student in, at Huntington affected that, your, your um, process that you had as a filmmaker? Um, so being at Huntington, I've grown a lot because beforehand I would, when I would make movies with my friends and stuff, uh, I would do everything. So I'd be director, editor, producer, um, and when you're all of that at once, it can get a little bit draining. But coming to Huntington, um, we work on projects where sometimes I'm just a grip, other times I'm the director, a producer. So it was just really nice to like see uh, and work together as a team instead of just doing everything yourself. That's interesting. Yeah. So um, how do you usually approach a project um, w as a director versus when you're producing? Okay, so as a director, I come at it more like a, in a creative way. Um, with producing, like it's funny, I don't really want to be a producer. I feel like I'm not too good at it. I would more, I'm, I'm like more the creative side because with director you get to like set, you get to talk with the DP and you get to do more of the creative stuff. With producing, it's more behind the scenes. Like, okay, this is the budget. This is what we have to work with. This is the time limit we have with it, and it doesn't really call me as much as directing does. I see. Where does the inspiration for your films that you make usually come from? So it depends on the film. With Puppy Love, as we saw there, that was assignment that we had to do in class, and. Uh, a professor Phil was like, okay, this is uh, what we have. And it actually came to me. I was like, well, I just got a new puppy. And usually in film, like two things to avoid is working with puppies and children. And my first thought was like, I had to work with my new puppy. I don't know why, but that's what came to me. And uh, so I formed this little script around my dog. And usually it's just things that um, that just happen around me. So Yeah, that, that was actually a really fun project. And 
I, I was really happy to be a part of that yeah, too. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so who are some of your favorite filmmakers and how have they uh, inspired you? Um, obviously Steven Spielberg is the main one because he's just worked on a lot of films that I love um, and just some um, but the main one for me would be my dad um, without him I wouldn't really have gotten into filmmaking um, he just taught he taught me everything that I needed to know before coming to Huntington and of course at Huntington I've learned more but my father is the main one that I look up to so so um, what's your favorite part of the creative process in directing a film uh, my favorite part in directing a film in the creative process is um, coming up with like the characters in the story in the world uh, that they live in I don't know why but that's the most like yeah. favorite part of mine and then seeing it all come together once you finally film and then edit it because when you come up with the idea as it won't be the finished product won't be the same as what you started with it will grow and develop as you go right. along with it so it must be really rewarding just watching like the final product oh, yeah. of all that planning. The best thing is what, having an audience watch it for the first time and laughing and you're just like, this is why I do it, to bring joy to other people. Exactly. So lastly, um, what advice do you have for other young aspiring filmmakers? Um, my advice to other filmmakers would be never stop creating. Go out and make that short film you want to make. Go write that script you want to make. Just never give up and just keep creating because that's what film is. It's telling the stories that needs to be told. It's getting out there, doing stuff that you're scared of and just creating and making stories. So. That's, so, that's so meaningful. Well, thanks for sitting down with me today, Chloe. We're, we're so lucky to have you here at Huntington. All right, I've got the file. Let's blow this place. What are you doing? Do you see this couch? What about it? Dude, me and my girl have been looking for this couch everywhere we go, man. I just found it. What are you doing? Bro, it's Pier 1. We're leaving. Not without this couch. Go, 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 go! Pure one, baby! Hi, everybody. I'm Guy Erickson, President and CEO of the Peoria Chamber of Commerce. And here today, I'm with Ken Parsons from West Side Siderama. How are you today, Ken? I'm great, Guy. Sounds Happy to good. be here. So, how long has West Side Siderama been in business? So West Side Sinorama, we started in 2003, so 16 years we've been in business. Um, we've been in a couple of different locations in Peoria. We're currently at Kelton Avenue and 87th Avenue. Um, it's, uh, it's been a good ride. It's, you know, made it through some tough times, but we've come out the other side and things are going well. So you started in 2003? Correct. So you weathered that fun market of 2008 to 9 where we did that was, those were some tough periods it was for everyone, uh, for everyone right it was it was hard slugging there for a while but uh, things are going much better today we're staying busy uh, really busy in fact we're probably looking at hiring another person in the next uh, few days that's fantastic love mm -hmm. to hear of growing small businesses right? so now this is your third or fourth location uh, well it depends on how you count them so it's our third uh, maybe our fourth but our, our previous one was only three doors away, so we only moved a few well, doors the last time. but still, each time you've grown, you've mm -hmm. expanded into a larger mm -hmm. location. And yeah. this one I've had the pleasure of visiting, and it's kind of amazing. And you've got a lot of new equipment in this new location. Share some of that, because they're fascinating pieces. Sure, so with the, with the increase in size, we were able to get some new equipment. So one of the pieces that we got was a uh, an automated production table, if you will. So it's a large uh, five foot by 10 foot production table that, that lights, it has backlighting on the table itself. So that helps us with some of the production we're doing. It also has a, a roller with a hydraulic that lifts the uh, roller up and down that makes it much more efficient for our production guys to be able to lay vinyl. And so uh, that is one piece of equipment that we were able to get. The other that we have is a uh, textured print a printer so it's um, we can run it through we can run solid substrates through this printer and it actually prints texture so it's almost you could almost think of it as a 3d printer um, more like two and a half D maybe because it only comes up maybe quarter inch or so but it allows us to do some really really interesting stuff with texture it also prints white which is not uh, always typical in printers, so we can do some back print on clear materials, do some nice prints on that, and then textured material 
on the front side to do some really nice uh, architectural pieces. So have you turned out anything on these new pieces yet you can share with us? So that, that new printer is really new, like a week or two, and so we're still really going through some training and, and learning on how to use that and how to set up. We've done a few small things, some uh, name tags and uh, some stuff like that, but uh, as, it, as we move forward and learn more about it, we'll be able to do some really interesting architectural, like uh, door uh, office nameplates and um, okay. different smaller pieces like that. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and you said the, the big table that almost looks like an air hockey table, <laughs> for, um, that's used for vinyls? And so what kind of signs are done with that? Yeah, so we can do all sorts of um, production. So it's a production table. It, um, so after we've printed something on our wide format printer, we can take it off and, and use that automated table to lay it down. Uh, for instance, previously, when we had a regular production table that wasn't automated, it would take two of us to lay down a four foot by eight foot sheet, for instance, something that we might be putting out in the city for um, construction projects okay. and that type of thing, right? Now one person can do that and do it much faster and do a much better job. Which um, allows for more work to be turned out. More work to be able to push through the, uh, through the shop, for sure. Yeah. So what are your projects that you are most proud of? So some of the things, uh, that's a good question. So some of the things we've done uh, recently and some maybe not so recently. So one of the ones is right here at Huntington University. We've done a, a lot of work in here. It was a fun project. The request was for kind of an industrial grunge type of look to the to the uh, signings that we did here. So we did some interesting things with uh, steel and tile, had things water uh, jet to, to get them to proper size, had to rust some of that steel to get it to, uh, to, to, to the right look. So that was an interesting project. More recently, a couple, we've had a couple of big jobs that have been headquarter type work for two different organizations where they've built very large headquarters with a lot of glass, and when they put a lot of glass, then they want some privacy. And so we've done a lot of privacy striping around conference rooms, executive offices, all that kind of stuff cool. with different Sounds types good. of graphics. So I'm assuming things. if somebody pops in and wants your services, you're happy mm -hmm. to give them a tour and show them Abs their great things? Absolutely, we love showing people around the shop. We've got some, uh, some fun stuff going on. And, Terrific. Uh, well, thanks for your time today, Ken. Much appreciated. I wish you continued success. And that wraps it for today, everybody. Um, I look forward to talking to you again soon with another one of our chamber members. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about Huntington University and the Peoria community. Please check us out at our Huntington University Arizona on our Facebook page and Instagram.